Welcome to the Lion Punch Forge Library. In case you're wondering, all these books here? Yes, some of them are leather bound. And yes, this room does smell of rich mahogany. Hey everyone, it's Chris from Lion Punch Forge. Today we're going to talk about the Haymaker Saw. A saw for makers. If you haven't already, click that little red subscribe button down there on the bottom and that bell notification. That bell notification is like an alarm clock. It alarms you when I make a new video and post it so you don't miss the thing. Also, if you haven't already, right down here, if I've done my editing correct, you've, uh, you'll see a little uh, link to lampunchforge.com to LPF swag. Dot com and uh, let you look at some merchandise some good stuff some tools who doesn't love good tools so check those out and hang on for the haymaker the haymaker saw what makes the haymaker different well we started off with a design philosophy a vision if you will of creating a tool that was based around fundamentals now fundamentals are those fun things that we don't really necessarily like to practice but they are so so important because fundamentals are those things that set apart the good from the amazing somebody who is extremely good at the fundamentals of something the basics is that much better and can excel in the more amazing things so it's not a yarn sorry it's not a bunch of amazing things all put together that you have to pay a bunch of money for to get good at something you've got to be very very good at the basics so we started with the basics when it came to the saw sawing fundamentals tells us that we should saw straight up and down it's the way the saw is designed to be used but a lot of other saws now try this with yours if you're watching this go grab your saw go ahead and hit pause I'll wait okay I hope you have your saw Take your finger, hold it straight up and down, hold it right here, right behind the top blade knob, and let it go. I bet dollars to donuts that your saw did this, or your saw did this. Now the haymaker does this, stays straight up and down. The balance point for the haymaker is right at the handle. That's a one-fingered saw action right there. Let me turn around so you can see the haymaker part. That's one-fingered saw action. So, what does this do for us? Well, if you start off with a tool that allows you to perfectly balance in a way that fundamentals teach us we should, you're going to end up with more accurate cuts. You're going to end up with breaking less saw blades. You're going to be a lot more less fatigued. I know, I said that weird, didn't I? A lot less fatigued. A lot more less. A lot less fatigued than if you're going to use a saw that was fighting you with the fundamentals. Now, if your saw tips back like this when you balance it, Think about when you're sawing. Do you find yourself sawing with the back this way? If your saw tips forward, do you find yourself sawing this way? If you do, it's probably because your saw frame is giving you little tiny balance cues on where it wants to go. So, the haymaker, perfectly balanced, 
straight up and down for the fundamentals. Now, let's look at it this way. A drill chuck is a tool holder. A cullet holds a milling bit or a milling bit or a yeah that tool holder whatever it is call it drill chuck should be accurate it should be balanced and if it's not say for example you stick a drill bit in a drill chuck and it's off it's in between one of the jaws your drill bit does this and it drills in a wonkied out wallard hole you don't want that you want the, the diameter of the drill bit that you've chosen for the job if it's off balance it's going to wobble same thing with a cullet in a mill your end mill is going to deflect left or right forward or back if your cullet's not accurate so the cullet, the drill chuck, those are your tool holders. The saw frame is a tool holder. Same thing. Your saw blade is your tool. So the more balanced, the more accurate your saw frame is, the more accurate your cuts, the less you're gonna wear things out, and the more fun you're gonna have sawing. So, why did we make it the way we did? The handle, real quick, is made from aluminum extrusions. This is pressed out like aluminum sausage, and that hole is left in the center of the rod. That rod is then cut into sections after it is turned on a lathe to make the handle shape. And the handle shape acts as one, comfortable, two, counterbalance to the frame. The frame itself without the handle looks like this. You have a full length tang. Tang is what we call this guy here. Same thing in the knife biz. And that tang allows you to attach a handle to it. Now a lot of German saw frames have little tiny itty bitty stub tang. Nobody wants a stub tang. Handle falls off. Nobody wants that. The haymaker, the handle, once it's turned on the lathe, is pressed onto that tang using about 50 tons. That's a lot. That's like one more ton than 49 tons. That's a lot of tons. Once that's done, the entire saw frame is sent off to anodizing. So you get the same color, same uniform color. Right now, the saw comes in red, blue, black, and my favorite, gold colored not actual gold although that would be pretty sweet so with that you have your saw frames and your handles all match why did we do colors we did colors because basically you you all you little dumb fun watching people all you guys are eccentric each one of you is an individual each one of you has a style of your own and the jeweler saw, the jeweler saw is the heart and soul of the maker's bench. This is what we reach for, for a lot of things. Heart and soul. We want to make sure that the heart and soul of your bench is as eccentric as you are. Because you, as an individual, are important because your tools, your style, reflects in what you make. Why not have tools that reflect your individualism, your style, and your fun nature? I wanna to get to know all of you. All right, maybe not all of you, just, yeah. We'll try, we'll, tr we'll, we'll see what we can do. See you next year in Tucson. So, this saw frame, colors eventually lends itself to customization we can do laser engraving for your school for your studio 
for you as an individual artist or your business, customize. Why not? Right? 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 Yeah. You know. So, this lends itself to a customizable platform. This little fella here, people say, what's that? Well, I came from the knife business. Did some knife building and that kind of stuff. And in that, it's called a guard. I put it there because I like it. Also, the holes and the guard lends itself to that balance I was referring to. Everything is the way it is because it's harmonically balanced. Oh yeah. So, the frame parts itself. You have three different parts attached to each of the tensioning mechanisms. So, six parts total. Part number seven is the frame. We have what I refer to as a shoe. This is the piece of spring steel that is produced in a separate operation that goes over the tightening stud here, right on like that, and protects the aluminum from the steel saw blade. Now when this is placed into the saw, and the saw is threaded, the die, or the, excuse me, the uh, tab, goes all the way through the steel, through the aluminum, and out the other side of the steel. So it's all threaded at the same time. Part number two, yeah, let's call it part number two, is your little platey, little plate thing. It's got a hole in it. This is what clamps the saw blade to the shoe against the frame. Now an important part of this guy is that if you're having blade slippage, rough that up with perpendicular striations with a file or graver or something like that because Smooth surface, smooth surface doesn't really work well with clamping stuff, especially if it's under tension. So that's quick fix. Do one side, rough it up, put some striations perpendicular to the blade, put that roughed up area back where it should be. The last part we're gonna talk about are our tightening knobs. These tightening knobs look like plastic. This is not the plastic that you get from China. This plastic, this product, is more of a synthetic than it is what we know to be plastic knobs. These are made by a company based in California. They've been in business since 1969 and they make industrial components. So, these knobs are rated for the tension that we want to place on them in our saw. They're rated for durability. And at first, I have to admit, I wasn't real fond of the idea of having those on there. The more I look at them, the more I use them, the more I'm confident in their ability to hold up and do what we want them to do. Now, like we talk about in a few minutes, customizing. Eventually, we may offer options. So, this is a base model. Base model saw. Now we have an open door for options, for all sorts of fun customizations. And essentially what you're gonna end up with is the whole saw put back together. Right now it's not back together because uh, you didn't see it off camera. I dropped it on the floor pretending like nothing happened, but I can't lie. So, what we ended up with was this guy, the Haymaker. It's got a five inch throat. I know what you're thinking, that's a deep throat. You're right, it is. And it lends itself to cutting larger pieces or larger, larger pieces of sheet. It has a long, usable throat. The weight on this saw is 7.6 ounces. 7.6 ounces represents nothing really large, but it is generally the same as a lot of other saws on the market. It weighs well within that. It doesn't feel like it weighs that way because of the balance. 
So when you have one of these and you try one of your other saws, see what it feels like. So one of the last things is the blade, when it's nested in between its two lovely tightening points, rests right in the center of the frame, which lends itself again to our philosophy. Balance. Balance of a tool holder. So, I am willing to take any questions, throw them down in the comments, say hi, tell me you have one, tell me you want one, tell me anything. I'm not going to make you buy one. If you want one, you want one. I'm not the boss of you, but I will explain to you why we've made what we've made in the ways that we made it and I think you guys are awesome eccentric amazing different every single one of you I don't see why you shouldn't have a saw that represents you and your individualism at your bench with your heart and soul the haymaker saw the saw for makers